you know, once again, we want to be able to see how entrepreneurs really are able to break through and excel and create their own story through their own journey, which it always goes back to the beginning when they first grew up. We're going to get into our Rick Jordan, my man Rick from Reach Out Technology. Shaking, Rob. Right? Yep. Cyberspace security. Yeah. At a level that we haven't seen, and you're going public. Yeah, right on. Just like that, right? So Yeah, so, overnight, so, right? <laughs> so overnight success, 10 years in the making. Yeah. So Rick, you know, we were talking a little bit off camera. Where, where were you originally from? From the south suburbs of Chicago, man. Okay. Yeah, it's still there, actually. Is that where you grew up? Yeah, like where I grew up. Yeah. And, and what, what was it like coming up in the early years? What did your parents do? How did you get involved in technology? Dude, my parents never really made a lot of money. You know, my dad always used to say that he had the best part-time job of the world. He sold insurance, like term life insurance in the ghetto. Wow. In Chicago, yeah. You're talking like a $10,000 policy just to cover right. exactly yeah. right on. But they were always cash premiums, too, because he would go around. I mean, you're talking like the 80s and 90s, right? Yeah. Always go around and collect the premiums himself. Yeah. Just because that's how he would get people to pay and keep yeah. the policies up. To keep them know? up, yeah. Right on. You know, wow. even if it was just 25 bucks a month or whatever, he would go and pick up the cash. And, and that would give that would make sure he would get paid and protect the family as right well. Right on. That's exactly how did How did he, was he really good at it? Like, was it a, was it a niche that he had? He did, he, man, I, I like to think that he probably only worked about 20 hours a week. Yep. In this, and it, when he said he had the best part-time job, he was always there in the morning when his kids left for school, and he yep. was always home before we got back. Wow, so you really yeah. had good connections. He was awesome, yeah. yeah. But, I mean, because of that, he never made a lot of money either. Yep. He did enough to put a roof over our heads, set a really stable family life. And your mom was a domestic engineer? Yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah. She actually ran, like, a daycare out of her house to wow. help make ends meet, man. How many siblings? Two. So, younger, a lot younger. Was it in Chicago, like like the west side, like where, what part of Chicago? Southwest suburbs is where I grew up, like uh, Orland Park, Frankfurt. So you know. everybody knew everybody's business. Yeah, it was always, a neighborhood, dude. blue collar. Especially in the church realm, man. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. I can relate to that 100%. Yeah. So growing up in that environment, everything's always competitive when you're in school, whether it's sports or yeah, whatever man, you do. Played keep baseball for nine years too. Did so, you really? Yeah. High school through high school? No, in middle of high school. Then okay. I stopped when I was about 15 or 16. Now, were you a big younger kid? Yeah, you know, same, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, because I mean, I'm 6'1. Yeah. yeah. You know, but I was always bulky, I yeah. can say. Yeah. So, so tell me a little bit about, like, you know, because right now we're going to get into what your company is and yeah. what's happening, but how did it start for you years and years ago? We were sharing a little bit about technology, but you were talking more about the human relationship. Yeah, the relationship side is awesome. It was, it, it, I was only 11 or 12, and I started tinkering around. I built my first computer when I was 10. You built your own? Built my own when I was 10 years old. Family friend kind of walked me through it because he was into tech. But then I would go across the street and help my neighbors whenever they'd have a computer problem. And that's how I kind of got hooked on Mountain Dew, too. You know, every time I go over, they, they'd pop a nice cold can of Mountain Dew on the desk. Yep. So I was like, that was exciting for me. Yeah. You know, at 11 or 12 years old, I'm getting some free soda. And did you correct, like, a, did, did you get a business from that point on on it, or are you just really good at it? Just really good at it. That's Through it. Through high school? You got it. And what happened during high school to college years? Yeah, my dad passed when I was just 16. Rest in peace. That must have been tough. Yeah, right on. Because he was so good. Like, always, so yeah. So connected. Amazing. So before, what was that like? 16, 17, 18, your dad passed away. It was interesting. We talked about my siblings a little younger than me, five and six years younger. So it was really raising that. My mom still had to work full time, you know, doing like seven dollar an hour jobs. And that was it. So I would raise, them, I would bring them to school. I would make sure that they were fed, pick them up from school. Did your dad have insurance, even though he was selling it? He did. He absolutely okay. did. Awesome. That's, it's beautiful because he set it up to where the house was completely paid for. Right. Yep. He carried enough on himself so that it wouldn't be too much of a financial burden. Yeah. Still, it was not a lot of money to go around. Yeah. But at the yeah. same time, made sure that we weren't kicked out to the street. Yeah. Did he die suddenly? or was he sick or was it was uh he had leukemia so he was being treated for years but then they're like you need to get this cured and the bone marrow transplant he just caught a regular virus dude when that happened yeah. and just went in, like a week and a half wow it was like a, from a successful transplant to dead wow. in a week and a half and what was it like responsibility wise help raising the kids it that, was, how did you feel about that it was pretty hard and but at the same time, it was like a switch kind of flipped to me. Yeah. Because I, I, 
dude, I never complained. It just it happened. I'm like, how am I not going to take care of my yeah. my brother and sister? Yeah. It's my job now. Yeah. You know, it was never anything that I tried to run away from or, or whatever. I would think that's probably the case with a lot. Yeah. Because you're in there, and I think people generally want to do the right thing. Yes. Especially when they're younger, man. I mean, I, I was 16, but my brother was 11. Yeah. My sister was 10. And they needed you. Yeah. Yeah. And it's funny because we hear entrepreneurs always talking about live comfortably and uncomfortability. Yeah. And the better you are at it, you'll be more successful. And then you'll stretch yourself. And even though you had no choice, but that shows you you could do something that you didn't know you could do. You got it. Right? Now, when you went to college, though, was there a void in the house with your mom? And, or did Dude, you just go out of I went to college for two weeks. Yes. <laughs> yes. I, uh, I went. I'm like, this is not the thing for me. So, local or did you go away? It was local. It was a junior college. Got it. You know, I never wanted to go away just because I, I still had a job. You know, I was actually a manager at a Radio Shack wow. at that point. So you loved being there. I did, yeah. 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 But then I, when that ended... I started working for Merrill Lynch, and that's when I was kind of taught on the job, all the servers, all the was networking. Was that your job there? It, IT? Yeah, yep, exactly. Okay. Yep, building everything. Wow. Uh, like setting everything up, and then I got into the security side of it. And how long was that time period, Merrill Lynch security? Maybe about three years. Okay. That's it. Then I started working for uh, Geek Squad part-time. Geek Squad. And I was the very first Geek Squad agent in Chicago. Really? The first one, man. When they... How did you get involved in that? How did you know that that was the way that... Like, I, I suspect that you could see trends before we all see them in technology. Yeah. Do yeah. you have that gift? It's interesting you say that because I've never seen myself really as a tech person. Yep. It's like everybody from the outside looks in and is like, oh, you're the guy that knows all the stuff. Yep. It's like, no, what I'm really you good at trends. is exactly yes. strategy. Patterns. Knowing, seeing the forks in the road 10 miles before I get there. Yeah. You know, that's what excites me too. Yeah. The tech is a tool Yes. in order to accomplish what anybody's trying to go for as an yeah. outcome. But I take a look and I'm like, you know what? I can see the industry going this way. We should start making our moves now. Yeah. And that was Merrill into the security side. Yeah, in the Geek Squad. Geek Squad. Then what happened? Yep. Then I got laid off, bro. <laughs> and how old were you at that point? Uh, how old? That was 2007. So I would have been 27. Okay. It was right when my twins were born. Oh, you have twins? Yeah, I have twins. Awesome. And a younger dude. But he, they were uh, they were born in 2007, and I was laid off two weeks before that. What happened then? Were you scared? Yeah. Not so um, much, man. It's like it was the same thing as when my dad passed. You know, it's like, well, I guess now's the time to do my own shit. Is that what you did? Yeah. That's exactly. So that was the first business that you owned on your own? Yeah. Wow. You got and what, that journey, did, was it like... Did you really accelerate fast? Even because 2008 was the you know the recession. It was. So what was that like for you? Um, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Like that was an easy sell because okay. a, a lot of IT companies back then were still doing hourly rates. I remember that. Yeah, and it's like you know charge you a hundred bucks an hour at that point. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to give you a flat rate for unlimited service. Economy's kind of messed up right now. How does that sound? You so you know what you're going to pay. Yeah. You know, I, and this is the strategy and the service part, right? Yep. I hated IT for, I, like, I literally hated IT for two reasons. Yep. Because when some dude or some girl walked through the door, you would know two things. First, that there's a problem. Something's broken. Yep. Second, you would know that you'd get an invoice after. It's like, yes. how do we adjust those two things? Yeah. So that when you're walking in, they're giving you like a hero's welcome because everything works all the time. Yeah. And second, they know they don't owe you any money. Yes. Yes. So so you turn that into what? Turn that into reach out technology. Tell us all about yeah. it. Yeah. Dude, it's 13 years old now, at least in this iteration. Oh, it is that? Okay. Yeah. So, so you went right into that. Exactly. And now you have 50 employees, you were saying? Yeah. So early years, did it gain some some momentum at some point? Yeah, that lifestyle business. Yeah, it was uh, making a good amount of money, making a good living, just comfortable. And, uh, and that was what, like from 12 to 18, 12 to 12 to I'd say 16, 17. Got it. And then uh, I had some health issues in 2015, but I came out of that. I'm like, you know what? I've got a limited amount of time on this planet, just like anybody. Yep. What can I do that really impacts people? Really? Yeah, and it's like, how do I do this? So if I, I'm going to seek after building wealth for others. Yeah. Which means that I'll have a byproduct of having yes, wealth. I agree with that. 100%. And so how do we do that? So I launched a personal brand. I started making connections. And then it was 2019. I was approached. I didn't go after a public offering. Yeah. It's like, how do I scale? How do I do this big time? How do I affect the most amount of people as possible? Yeah. And somebody approached me, they're like, if you went public and you had millions of dollars, what would you do with the money? Like, easy. I'd buy a lot of companies. 
I'd make them, I didn't even know the term roll up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this one, like I'd buy a bunch of small companies, I'd make a really big company that's nationwide, that's like the Kleenex yeah. of this industry, which doesn't exist right now. Yep. Still doesn't, except for me, because I'm still growing. Yeah. You know, somebody gets hit, what do you do? Yeah. Nobody knows who to call, they start to Google, I do, or chat GPT, right? I just got hacked. Yeah. Who do I call? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So wait, so when they said that to you, were they, were they watching you for a while? Is that About what? a year or so, yeah. And you didn't even know that? I had no idea. <clears throat> so they must have liked your answer, obviously. Yeah. What happened yeah. after that? After that, it well, took you about... you a good answer, so... Yeah, thanks, man. Yeah. 2020 happened, I mean, you yeah. know, the pandemic, right? Were you still making money during 2020? What's that? Did your business still work during 2020? It did. We actually grew yeah. during 2020, a lot, yeah. grew a lot. And during that time, it took a lot longer to bring the Regulation A offering to fruition. It took about three times as long and about three times as much money as I had anticipated. And how much has been raised so far? In the Reg A, it was only about a half a million. Really? That's it. So what's That's happening it. next? Next, we're buying more companies. Okay. We're listing on OTC. That's our intention right now. We've got more acquisitions in the pipeline. We've got people that are excited. But the personal brand, man, has been huge. I'm sure you know that. So let me it's ask been, you this. Yeah. Absolutely. So you're now going public. There's new rules. Yeah. Right? So how is that How is that playing into your personal brand and what you can and can't say? And are you like, do you have to get stuff compliance approved or anything like that? Not specifically. I think we're still small enough in a market cap right now. Yeah. But as we continue to, to go forward, because, uh, again, I didn't even know this stuff three years ago, right? Yeah. There's different stages of public companies. Yep. You know, we did Regulation A, which is public, not listed. You know, so everyone's like, cool, what's your ticker? And I'm like, we don't have one. Yeah. We're a public company, but we <laughs> don't have a yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was so difficult to try to explain that. But like that's the safe from compliant. But again, I'm, I'm it still, did. Yeah, Absolutely yeah. it did, yep. So now, with our intention to list on OTC, you know, as, as an exchange, we've got more acquisitions in play, but then the, the goal, the end game really is NASDAQ and make this something really that's worthwhile for a lot of people. Yeah. Listen, the people that I see that make the most money, the owners of publicly traded companies, real estate, yeah. and entrepreneurs. Right? But dude, it's going to help so many people. Too. Of course. Of everybody course. who's a part of it, everybody who's an early investor, everybody who's an employee, yeah. employee <laughs> stock option programs. It's a, That's one of the three reasons why I did this is literally building wealth for everybody involved. Yeah. And what made you want to do that? Yeah. What's the what's the pull there? I don't know. I have a, I have a great faith in humanity. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, everybody that I see, it's like if somebody comes across my path, yep. I know they're there for a reason, and usually I try to find how I can help them. Yeah, not really the other way around. How did you meet Dave Meltzer? Uh, a board member actually met his director of partnerships in like a coffee shop or something. You're a board member of his company? No, a board member of my company. Oh, you met, him on? Yeah, met Jake, and he was saying you got to meet Rick Jordan. He's like, okay, so I'll meet Rick Jordan. So we ended up connecting. Dave invited me on to one of his shows, and it's been... And when was this? This was just last year, about a year Dude, ago. Dude, I'm on the same timeline. Yeah. It's amazing. <laughs> I love it. He's awesome. Are you yeah. Are you going to build out one of those podcast studios? Possibly. We talked about using Blue Wire. Yeah. You know? yeah. I, I have a studio in Chicago. That's where I, I built or uh, record my show now. So tell us all about your show. Yeah. Dude, We're, all in with... Compared to the business. Yeah. It's uh, I love it. You know, I love the business side, but but being able to speak and, and take people from an emotional state in one place to another, so that they can go after what they want. I love that. Dude. So for your podcast, you interview people and take them on a journey. I do a lot of them. A lot of the shows are solo too. You know, because it's just well, you're just talking, just me. Yeah, yeah, something on my heart. But then the guests, it's like forty to forty-five minutes, right? But the solos are like 10, 20 minutes, something yeah. like that. To versus hard hitting this is what I've got for you today for whatever's going on in that day you got it is yep. it any topic is it like what's the theme it depends of whatever well the theme the show's all in okay right and it's gotta, like whatever it version out. that looks like for you that day yeah yeah and how do you typically get guests do they do they reach out to you now they reach to us yeah how I mean cool at first that? dude it was uh because I mean the show's been it's almost five years old now, 350 episodes. Wow. You know, listen, no sense, it's like top 2% of the world. I'm wow. really grateful. Wow. It's a, but that's a lot of podcasters, right? Because everybody starts it. Yeah. So they listen, stop I'm, after like seven episodes. Yeah, I have I have a podcast, and I'm honestly... We're on it, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I thought that's... <laughs> but I don't I don't know how to... I mean, these guys do. I, I, I do better track on my Instagram, yeah. my TikTok, and, and Facebook, and... And my YouTube channel, yeah. I don't know how to track 
the the podcast other than the, they say how many downloads you have. Yeah. But I don't know. There's so many things I don't know about that space. Is there certain things that you look at as your trends when it comes to what you're doing with your podcast? Here and there, yeah. I mean, a, a lot of it. I, one thing I do, morning routine, right? I'll get up, I'll cook my breakfast, I eat right away, but then I'm reading the news. You know, it's just on my phone with Apple News and Google News, Wall Street Journal, but one of the best subscriptions ever. You know, Business Insider, I, I scroll through some of these things. It's information consumption. Helps you for the day? Yeah, every day. Yeah. It sets me up for the day, but it, but it keeps me knowledgeable of what's going on in the world. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I mean, of course, there's a lot of negative headlines all the time, but it's like when I see some, it's like, cool, how is this affecting everybody else, and what can I say about this? Yeah. How can I help cut through the BS? Yeah. Yeah, because there's a lot of BS in media, bro. Nonsense, fake news? <laughs> yeah, right, right on. So, so do you have like loyal fans at this point? Yeah, yeah. T tell us what that's like. It's interesting. What, what, kind like, of, what kind of information feedback you get? I went to a, a restaurant the other day, and someone comes up and, and says, hey, I, I don't mean to be a, all fanboyish, but the gentleman that you're with, doesn't he host a podcast or something? That's amazing. I know. And like, well, yeah, he's like, oh, I follow him. You know? How'd that feel? It's a, it's, it's gratifying. Yeah. You know, and it's not in a way to where it like puffs up an ego. Yeah, yeah. No, it's you, like I'm able impact. to. You got it. Yeah. Yeah, man. So, and, and that's a. Uh, Somebody once said that good marketing is marketing that you can feel. Yeah. You know, good branding is branding that you can feel. Wow. And I, I feel that yeah. when those things take place. Are you on Instagram and TikTok as yeah. well? Not TikTok. So, TikTok's a little bit of a conundrum because I run a cybersecurity company. Okay, fair <laughs> enough, fair enough. It's a little so anti-values. For these folks that are checking us out yeah. though, and they want to watch your podcast or get in touch with you, yeah. what does that look like? Yeah. How would they? Mr. Rick Jordan, go to Instagram, Mr. Rick Jordan. You'll see the links to my show. Mr. I mean, I'm on all Jordan. platforms. You can just search my name. Google I'm gonna me. start checking tonight. I can't wait yeah. to check it out. Awesome, bro. Yeah, I'm gonna start commenting and everything. So, so you have a lot of great things going on with the brand. Taking the company public, which is very, it's not an easy thing it to do. It sounds all good on the surface, years. right? It's hard. It's a yeah. lot of work. It's it is a lot of work. It's a lot. It's it's lonely nights. It's uh, drive homes alone sometimes. Yeah. Um, some people get disappointed with you because you can't give them what they might need. A lot of people in that do. moment, you know, yeah. and you know, there's a lot of pulling and tugging. My question is for you: What does it look like five or ten years from now? Wow. I always start to <laughs> I always start to think about that question, and I never ask that question in an interview either because I don't know how many people can think five years out. How about two like, years? Yeah, two years. Li listen on Nasdaq, ringing the bell. A lot of people that a lot of people that are just fulfilled and and ringing the bell, well off, yeah. right? Because they were a part of this thing. And yeah, that's the, amazing. Dude. The the country is a safer place. Yeah, I love that. And when it's all said and done, yeah. and you do shuffle off this mortal coil, what do you want to be known for? Your wife, your kids, and the impact that you've had on people. Yeah, somebody who can really unify other people. Wow. You know, I, I, there's a lot of division, man. Yeah. There always is. Yeah. But when you get down to it, whether it's politics or religion or whatever, it's like everybody who even out there, it's like we all want the same basic things. You know, it's like the yeah, way we want freedom. Yeah. Happiness, security. You got it. Right? It's just we have different ideas on how to get there. Yeah. We all want the same stuff. Yeah. It's just different ideas on how to get there. Yeah. How can I help unify that? And what does that look like? How can you help? Yeah. Who knows? Maybe president one day, yeah. right? Dude, yeah. don't forget me if that happens. <laughs> yep, you got it. I may call you up. So anyway, folks, thank you for checking us out. Rick Jordan, without a doubt, go follow him. I can't wait to start tonight. We're both being mentored by David Meltzer. His brand is blowing up. He's obviously taking the company public, which is an incredible thing. It doesn't happen every day. He really wants to affect people in a positive manner when it comes to money, money, time, freedom, wealth, and be able to have people do what they want, when they want, how they want, with who they want, without any you know, money or time constraints, right? And that's what we call financial freedom. And brother, I can't thank you enough so much. I was, I was excited today because I know we've seen each other. Yeah, I was yeah. excited today when I found out you were gonna be one of the guests. So super grateful for your time and everything else and looking forward to co-creating even some more in the future. Yeah, brother, thank you. Thanks for having me on, man. Yeah.